pictures. Even when they're magnified, it's hard to see their features. They're tiny infinitesimal, so small that makes you doubt. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. But if you meet a pixie, please don't let their secret out. The ship in a bottle. Simka, Nolik, here, take a look at this. Oh, wow! Awesome! Where did you get this from? From one of the shelves in Dad's office. He's got lots of cool stuff in there. That's cool. I'll be the captain. This is like a totally real sailing ship with masts, cordage, and everything. And how can it all get in there through such a little hole? A ship in a bottle is a real miracle. Do you want me to tell you the secret of how it gets inside? It's like so. All of the ship's masts are collapsible. Before the boat is put into the bottle, the masts are folded down and pressed against the ship's body so it's small enough to fit through the bottle's neck. And once the ship is inside the bottle, the masts and sails are opened back up by pulling on a thread. Starboard! I'm an octopus, huh? Oh, look out! Brave sailors like us! We're not afraid of storms! Tom Thomas, be careful! Hey! Oh, ah! Uh. Did it break? No, it's all Tadish! It's not close to Tadish! Take a look how this mask broke! Whoa! Uh, what have I done? Don't worry, we can fix it. Get some glue, okay? Here's some super glue I found. This is the kind that'll keep things stuck forever. No, Lick! Come and help! Phew! Phew! This stuff is so stinky! Danish! Ooh, that's better, thank you, guys. We sailors ugh, never let a friend down. <laughs> no, Lick, you gotta get out. You'll get sick from that stinky air. <sighs> I can't get loose. <sighs> I I got stuck. Hello there, Tom Thomas. Uh, what are you doing with the ship from my collection in here? I just wanted to give it some air. Tom Thomas. You know that taking things out of my office is just not allowed. <laughs> hey, look! What an interesting cabin boy. I never noticed him before. I'll take it, Dad, and put it back on the shelf, okay? <laughs> Who just sneezed? Uh, I did. Achoo! Well, all right then. Do your homework, and please don't set foot in my office again. Simka, where are you going? To save Nolik! I'll come with you. You're not allowed inside that office. Your father said no. Sweetheart, your suit's getting cold. I'm coming. Nolik, where are you? Simka, why is everything turning? Because you inhaled the fumes from that stinky glue. <laughs> Ah, oh, phew! Everybody knows how strong the smell of paints, cleaning fluids, and glues can be. But the nasty smell is not where the real danger lies. Breathing in the fumes from paint or glue can give you a terrible headache. Or even worse, it can make you faint. And that's why when the Fixies need to paint or glue something, they're supposed to put on a safety mask called a respirator. And humans need to remember to wear masks just like Fixies when they're working with fumes. And never forget that the fumes from glue and paint can be flammable. It only takes one spark and kaboom! There can be an explosion. So always remember to have plenty of clean air moving through any room where you are gluing or painting anything. Uh, hurry up. Uh. Hang in there, Nolik. I'll get you out of there. Nolik! 
Oh, no. Is he okay? No, Lick. No, Lick. No, Lick. Oh, you're alive. Turning starboard. Turning port. Piesters. Piesters. Oh, whatever. He's gonna be fine. No, Lick. Do you know who I am? A giant octopus? The keyboard. Five, four, three, two, one. Ready, Ready or not, not, here we come. And where is he hiding this time? Tom Thomas! Yoo-hoo! Tom Thomas, you didn't forget about your grandma's birthday, did you? No. Oops, I did. <gasps> found you this time. Hey, that's not fair. It was my mom that found me, not you. Then go and hide again. Not now. I have to draw a birthday card for... Oh! My grandmother. So, we need one clean sheet of paper. When's your grandma's birthday? Tomorrow. But your card won't get there on time. Oh? Then what can I do? Come on and use your noggin. Pick up the phone and give her a ring. Your grandmother will be really happy to hear your voice. No, we've got a tradition. We send each other birthday cards. And what's the internet for? Why don't you send off an electronic card to her? Simka, that's genius. Oh, this one's cool. Now go ahead and type your message. The letter D isn't working. How can I write Dear Grandma without D? Just let her be a plain old grandma without the dear. But the letter G isn't working either. It looks like we could use a pack -a mat here. A pack -a mat What for? To clean off the keyboard's contacts that got all dirty. What contacts? A key on a computer keyboard works pretty much the same way as a doorbell does. When we press on the button of a doorbell, the contacts inside touch, which lets the electricity flow that makes the bells ring. And when we press a letter on a computer keyboard, an electrical current runs from the keyboard to the computer, and that letter appears on the screen. But if there's dirt between the contacts that stops them from touching, then the current can't flow. Drinking. And so, you shared it with the keyboard? Here's the reason why it's not working. Where did so many crumbs come from? Uh, they fell off my sandwich. Down here. That must be the sauce for my mushroom pizza. Oh, no, Lick. Well, now it looks like we're gonna be out picking mushrooms. The Fixies are always ready to help people out. But there are some people we really don't feel like helping. I remember when I was working as a Fixie back in one house. It was a disaster. One day, the owner spilled coffee on the remote for the TV. As I was running to clean the remote, he starts pounding the TV with his fist because the channels won't change. So now the TV is broken, too. Well, with no TV, he decides to listen to some music, and he carelessly pulls the music center onto the floor. So he tries to fix that himself and manages to break it for good. And then he sits down on top of his telephone and breaks that to bits. Meanwhile, I'm still busy trying to clean the coffee off of the remote. There wasn't a minute of rest with this guy around. In the end, I couldn't take it any longer. So I got out of there, and now I'm here, teaching kids. Tom Thomas, why are you eating food at your computer? Yeah, they don't feed you in the kitchen or something? <sighs> now I know it. It's not allowed. You said it. 
Now write your message. And write the address on there, too. Uh-huh. Mom, do you know what the email address for Grandma is? Grandma doesn't have an email address. So what? We went ahead and fixed that keyboard for nothing? I still need it. And my grandma? I'll give her a ring on the phone. You said you had a tradition of writing each other cards. And what? Grandma will be happy to hear my voice. That's some original idea, huh? <laughs> Modeling clay. All done. Simka, take a look. I've got my own mm, pack mat Now look at that, a pack mat made out of modeling clay. But this one's my own, and it looks just like a real one. Okay, you're right, it really does, Nolik. Simka, Nolik, what's up? Hi there, Fire. Wanna play some tag with me? I really wish I could play tag, but unlike you, I've got tons of work. Yeah, like what? Well, a bathroom hook fell down. Tom Thomas broke the lamp on his desk. The aquarium has a tube that's leaking. So go and play. I have to get a pack of mat. Oh, oh, oh. I wish I could play Ted. Hold on. Nolik, you've got a pack of mat. Uh-huh. Although I gotta say, it looks a little strange. That's because it's... Let's fix everything before Simka with your pack of mat and my fixie board. This'll be great. <laughs> So where is that hook that fell down? All right. Nolik, get out some sticky stuff. From where? Obviously, from out of your pack of mat mm, But it isn't real. I made it out of modeling clay today. Out of clay? Well, it totally looks real. Long ago, back in the Stone Age, people learned how to use clay to make their dishes and sculptures. But the modeling clay that we use nowadays was only invented about a hundred years ago. Actually, modeling clay is just plain old clay with some ingredients added so it won't dry out. And dyes are mixed in to make all the different colors. There is just no end to all the fun things you can make out of modeling clay. I got an idea. Go on, turn around. What are you doing? Grabbing glue out of your pack of mat All right, get up here. Will it stick? Yeah, of course it will. Let's go and fix the lamp. We can't fix this without a real pack of mat. Yours will work just fine. So, what else did Simka have to fix? The aquarium! Hop on! <laughs> well, where's that leaky tube? Here! It's leaking at the joint! Yeah, this tube is gonna need a lot of modeling clay. Give me the rest of your pack of mat. Sure! And here's a souvenir. <sighs> They're all done. What's all done? <laughs> we already fixed everything. And what did you fix it with? Modeling clay. <laughs> Modeling clay isn't gonna hold anything. Well, I say it will. Wanna bet? All right. <laughs> ah, it's exploding! <laughs> what in the world is happening here? Flooding water. You just do as I tell you without panicking. Did you know it's possible to make modeling clay in your own home? Just write down this recipe. You'll need a cup of flour, a half a cup of salt, and a half a cup of water. Now, mix the salt with the flour and add the water little by little. Mix it together really well. What are you saying? That it looks just like dough? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's just not for eating. It's way too salty. But you certainly can sculpt things out of it. If you want your modeling clay to be colorful, you can add food coloring or watercolors to it. That's it. 
Your modeling clay is ready to be sculpted. When you're finished, don't forget to let your figures dry in the sun. That way they'll get nice and hard and last you a very long time. <sighs> we almost didn't make it. And did you fix the lamp with that modeling clay? Uh-huh. And the hook, too. That was not a good idea. But it was really quick. Hey, that's true. That's why I want to give a medal to you. You're heroes. For real? Of course you are. And here it is, your medal. But it's made out of modeling clay. Your reward fits your heroic deed. The doorbell. Nolik! Nolik, what are you doing here? Just whistling a tune. Are you gonna whistle that tune the whole time Tom Thomas is away? He just left with his parents for a week. And we've got guests coming, remember? What guests? I invited everybody. The class? Yes, class. Uh, are they sleeping in there what, huh? First they invite us, and now they don't want to let us in? I'll share the present with you then. <laughs> uh, fire. Maybe you'll get it to work now. When they get here, they'll ring the bell. How come? Why don't they just do what they always do and climb through the keyhole? No way! It's not that simple, Nolik. Today they're our guests. Ah. The guests ring the bell, and the hosts let them in the house. Ugh. It doesn't ring. You think the doorbell's broken? I say we go fix it. Before we fix anything, we need to know what went wrong with it. First we'll fix it, and then we'll know what it was. <laughs> Back in the olden days, people would hang a bell over their doors with a string, and guests would tug on it to make it ring. Today, doorbells are electric, and they make all sorts of different sounds. Some buzz, some ring, and some even chirp like birds. The sound comes from a box inside the house called a chime. To make the chime ring, you push a button that's located outside. The button works just like a light switch, but instead of turning on light, it turns on sound. Verda, will you join me? Whoop. I gotta think about this. Yeah. Simka! You think your guests are gonna come at all? Hmm? Simka! Tula? Hey! The doorbell doesn't work! It must be broken! That's odd. We heard it ring this morning. Nolik, let's go! First, we'll examine the contacts. Yep, good and tight. Okay, let's check the speaker. <laughs> huh, the speaker's fine. Maybe the electronics are the problem. And what if we disconnect these wires and switch them? What'll that do? We'll know soon enough. You know what? Why don't we connect the wires straight together? Isn't that dangerous? We'll find out. Don't worry, nothing happened yet. Fire. He's the engine of our class. He's the fastest, the nimblest, and the bravest. Fire never sits still for a second, and he's always looking for adventure. New ideas just burn in his head. And that's why his name is Fire. But not all of his ideas are very good, so he's constantly getting bumps and bruises. He just can't help getting carried away. If he's burning with an idea, he can even forget about his classes at school. Grampus punishes him for that. But it doesn't seem to bother Fire, because some new plan will pop into his head the very next second. To be honest, Fire's my favorite out of all the boys in our class. It's sure never boring when he's around. Hey, you down there. I figured out why it's not working. So what's the reason? There's no electricity in the whole house. So that's why the bell isn't working. Uh, 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 uh. 
then what? We can't visit like real guests do until the electricity comes back? And when will it work again? Don't know. It could possibly take hours, guys. Oh! Oh! It's working again! Ah! Enough ringing! Hey, Fire, quit fooling around! He's not fooling around! It's not me, see? Then who's ringing it? I don't know. Well, I know. The doorbell's ringing because Fire connected the wires together. True, but I'll fix that right now. Ha! <laughs> Your guests sure are noisy. Yeah, thank goodness the humans aren't home right now. Hello! Hello there, dear guests. Let yourself into our home through the keyhole. So, should we go in? Go where? Go inside. Nah, that's not how guests act. So what do we do? Real guests always ring the bell. Okay, hold me tight. <laughs> the armor. 24, 25. Ready or not, here, here we come. come. I heard him. He ran into the hallway. You check the kitchen, Nolik, and I'll check the living room. We forgot to check in there. There's nowhere in here for him to hide. Inside the shark. <laughs> no, like, Tom Thomas couldn't even fit half of himself inside of that shark. Yeah? Then in that huge vase. Uh huh. He's all scrunched up in there and laughing at us. <laughs> oh! Simka! There! Did you hear that? He is in there! There's no one, but I know that I heard a hee hee. You imagined it. Let's go take a look in the bathroom. <laughs> hm. I imagined it. <sighs> it's so stuffy inside this armor. <laughs> the arms got stuck. Where else could he be? Oh, who is that? Ah! Sick of the knife, he came to life. Well, how much longer are you gonna look for me? Arbor is very hard clothing worn by warriors to protect them against swords and arrows. People started making armor in ancient times, but the full body armor that knights wore didn't start until the Middle Ages. The armor worn by knights on horses was heavy. It could weigh a hundred pounds, and if a knight got knocked off of his horse, he'd need help to get back up again. By the way, the knight's horses, they wore their own heavy set of armor for protection. Hey, did you turn into statues? Tom Thomas? Is that you in there? Who else? Lift up this visor, I can barely breathe. <laughs> and how come we should do it? Cause I can't, don't you see? My arms got stuck. We see? <laughs> you look funny. Funny to you, but now I'm stuck and I can't get out of here. Come on, help me out, please. <laughs> Chusaka's just what we need right now. Chusaka, what's wrong with you? It's me. Hey, stop it. Help, I can't get up. Come on, let's undo the latches, Nolik, quickly. Thanks for helping me. It was nothing. I couldn't have done it without you. Let's put the night back together. Uh-huh. Before Dad gets back. Protective clothing isn't just for people who are fighting in battles. Travelers put on special nets to protect themselves against mosquitoes and gnats. And beekeepers wear protective clothes, too. If they had nothing to protect them from bee stings, their job would be quite painful. <laughs> 
Without their protective clothing, it would be impossible for firefighters to go into burning buildings and save people. And how could astronauts go into outer space without special clothing? It's freezing up there and there's no air to breathe at all. And that's why they wear a special costume called a spacesuit when they travel. The spacesuit not only protects astronauts from the cold, but supplies them with air so they can breathe. By the way, the Fixies also wear protective clothing so they can stay safe while they work. Well there, did we get it right? It looks like we got it right. Only, where's the helmet? No look went to get it. Tom Thomas, helmet delivery! Thanks there, Chusaka. Whoa there, Warhorse. Calm yourself down. There we go. It's all back in place again. Too bad that your knight <laughs> looks like a ballerina twirling around. You see, his arm. Uh, I can't move it. It's stuck. Here's what we'll do. Give him something to hold. Well, how's that look? Perfect. Now we can paddle into battle. <laughs> the cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> like that. Yeah. Tom Thomas, aren't you done yet? Yeah, show us your surprise and quit drawing. But this is the surprise. So, make yourselves comfortable. Quiet on the set, and action! <laughs> Great crash, huh? You should put a huge bump on his head. It's just like a cartoon that you drew him there. <laughs> he did draw us a real cartoon there. Oh, right. Real cartoons, they only show them on television. But they make them exactly the same way. Animation is made with many, many pictures called frames. Each one of the frames is a little bit different from the one that comes right before it. For example, a character can lift his arm up a little bit at a time. And then, if you watch the frames very quickly, one right after the other, it looks like the character is really moving. And that's how cartoons are made. And you know what? To make one minute of a cartoon, you might have to draw more than a thousand frames. Oh, wow. I'm not patient enough for that. It's no big deal that your cartoon's short. Especially since it's funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so funny. Tom Thomas, who is this kooky guy you drew here? You're just joking, Nolik. You don't recognize yourself? So this is supposed to be me on here? Did you already forget what happened to you this morning? Simka, you're it. You can't catch me. <sighs> I'm too fast for you. Uh, oh. ay 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 <laughs> You weren't too fast for the pole. Oh, Simka, you didn't have to tell him about that. Real sisters don't treat their brothers like that. Oof. And your cartoon's not funny at all. No, Lick. Don't go. It's okay. He just needs to sulk for a while. While he's gone, there's something I want to show you. Do you have a cartoon you can put on the TV? I have plenty. What should I do? Let's watch it again. But now I want to show you the same cartoon a frame at a time. Here, take a look. This is a frame. And here's another. And another. Isn't that cool? Uh-huh. So cool. And then back at regular speed, there's 25 frames every second. What should I do? It's magical. Simka, you know, I feel awful for Nolik. Yeah, I feel awful too. There are many different ways of making animation. Hand-drawn animation is, of course, drawn by hand. And stop motion is made like this. 
The animators pose the model and take a picture of it. Then they move the model a little bit and take another picture. And they do it again and again and again until there are enough frames to make the characters look like they're moving very smoothly across the screen. Another popular style of animation is clay animation. In these films, everything is built and rebuilt out of modeling clay. But today, most of the cartoons are made on a computer. At first, they make a computer model of a character, a sort of digital puppet. After the models are built, they are colored and animated to move. This is the kind of animation that's used in the Fixie cartoons. Tom Thomas, what are you doing? Are you drawing a new cartoon? Nah, I started fixing the old one, so Nolik will stop being angry. Good, keep drawing, and I'll go and get him. Nolik! I'm not here! Nolik, forgive me! Please don't be so mad. There's a cartoon to watch. I've already seen your stupid cartoon. So what'd you do now? Put a huge bump on my head? Not a chance. I did it all over again. I'm sure you'll love it. You sure of that? All right, go ahead, show me your cartoon. Quiet on the set and action. There you go. Now that cartoon I really liked. Good, cause I'm all out of paper. Well, I think the first cartoon was funnier. <laughs> Whoa, but this one's much better, of course. Yeah. Mm -mm. The music box. And when the Pied Piper began to play his magical <laughs> flute, the rats came out of their holes and followed him. And they never would be seen in Hamlin ever again. Whew. And then what? Huh? I can't read anymore. My legs got tired. Whew. Simka, Nolik, something's rustling in there. In where? In Dad's office. It's on his desk. It's inside the wooden container. Hmm. So maybe there's a mouse inside it. Tom Thomas, sit right here while Nolik and I go and check. And if there's a mouse in there for real, then how are we gonna get it out? Those rodents are really so big. And why was I reading that book to you, huh? Just grab a flute, give it a toot, and the mice will scoot. And where are the flutes gonna come from? We'll make them. Toot, 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 toot. You got it? <laughs> sure I did. Wait a second. Let's get a little closer. like I told you. No more mice in there. So let's toot a little more so they won't go back in. All right. <gasps> so you're the ones messing around out here. Oh, Grandpus, it's you here. All day I can't work on what I need to do. Right from the start, someone's opening up the top and then you two tooting out. It was Simka who came up with the tooting. Just because you're afraid of mice. Wow, what kind of machine is this? Well, what do you think? A coffee grinder? Mm. No. A hole puncher? <laughs> mm. Is it a foot scratcher? What? what? Well, a machine for scratching your feet. <laughs> You're joking all the time, you. It's a music box, and it's just wonderful. <laughs> music boxes were invented more than 200 years ago. Inside, there is usually a cylinder with short pins sticking up from it. In front of the cylinder, there is a comb with metal teeth of different lengths. If you pluck one of the teeth, it will make a pleasant sound. A short tooth makes a higher sound, and a long one, lower. When the cylinder spins around, the pins pluck the different teeth, and music plays. Awesome! So what's broken in here? The spring slipped off. It has to be pushed back into the right place. Will you help? There we go. 
that's better. How come the music's not playing? First, you have to wind up the spring with the key. Tideesh! I know who can wind up the spring. Well, Tom Thomas, can you guess what kind of machine this is? A paper cutter. Uh-uh. How about a hole puncher? <laughs> You're such a joker. Now, don't go and tell me it's a foot scratcher. Then I don't know. Then wind it up with the key and you'll find out. Do you want to know how the higher and lower sounds come out? Put a regular ruler over the edge of a table. Hold down one end of the ruler and pluck on the other. The shorter you make the end hanging off the table, the higher the sound will be. The teeth inside of a music box work the same way. And bells work the same way too. The smaller the bell, the higher it rings. The sound of a violin or a guitar depends on how thick the strings are. Fat strings make a lower sound, and thin strings, a higher one. How tight the string is also makes a difference. Take a piece of string or a rubber band, tie one end to a doorknob, and pull on the other end. With your free hand, pluck the string. The tighter the string gets stretched out, the higher the sound. If you want, you can even play a tune. I think I got it now. It's an old player for music. That's close, but not it. A music box is what they call it. I just said that. So what was it in there, hmm? Just a broken spring. It's not the thing I'm dying to know. Who was moving around there? All I'll say is we, Tom Thomas. Won't let that secret out. Shh. The robot. Did I already tell you what I'm hoping you'll get me for my birthday present? <laughs> yes, honey. Only a thousand times or so. A robotazoid. R300 would just be the greatest. With Mega Vision, I want it. I really do. <sighs> I do. Well, tomorrow you'll find out. But now it's time to sleep, Tom Thomas. Wow, that is one great present. And we got Tom Thomas absolutely zero for his birthday. Uh, we're just terrible friends. So, how does this robot work? Okay. So let's give this a try, shall we? First, we'll take a walk. And how does he have any idea where the robot's going? I can tell you. One of the robot's eyes is a video camera. The robot sends the picture to the screen on the controller so the player can see where the robot is going. Yeah! And that's just one thing they know how to do. A robot is a smart machine that can do very difficult or dangerous work for humans. With its strong metal arms, a robot can move heavy objects or put together parts to build cars and other machines. Robots are often sent into outer space or to the bottom of the ocean to help scientists. There are also robots that can understand what people are saying and robots that can talk and even make jokes, just like people. I've got it. Now let's turn you around. Uh, what was that? Uh, look, you know... <gasps> he destroyed him! Nola, stop! You were playing with that, right? You think Tom will notice? Oh, I know what you're doing all night. I'm off to bed. I'll get him to work. I'll stay up until I do. Simka, let's try and... No, we're gonna need some help. When your TV has broken, when your cell phone has croaked, your laptop's barely working, <clears throat> the kettle's had a stroke. Don't ask us where we're going, or it's known far and wide, that any kind of problem is clearer from inside. One, two, Inside will be to fix what's wrong till it runs strong.
keep on working Cause our work's never done And deep inside of gadgets If you look when it's dark You might just see us race around Like multicolored sparks One, two, three Tanish! Inside will be Tanish! To fix what's wrong Tanish! Till it runs strong One, two, three Tanish! Inside will be Tanish! All day and night Tanish! We fix things right one, two, three, Tanish! Inside will be Tanish! To fix what's wrong, Tanish! Till it runs strong. One, two, three, Tanish! Inside will be Tanish! All day and night, Tanish! We fix things right. Wow, you got it! We need to hide. A robotazoid R300, I can't believe it! <sighs> <sighs> Well, happy birthday to you, Tom Thomas. I'm sorry, Tom Thomas. Last night, your robot, you know, I broke it. Dad, it works perfectly. Don't you see? I'm so proud of you. You fixed it. <laughs> I couldn't fix it at all. I tried everything. Oh, you want to tell me that the robot fixed itself? <laughs> what a joker. Mom, Dad, thanks so much. I love it. And how about thanking us? I should have known it was you who fixed the robot. Happy birthday! Happy birthday! Yay! Tubes. Today's lesson will be on pipes and tubing. Right here inside of this laboratory, you can see them all over. Look! Over there. And there. Some more over there, and there's another one. So, who can tell me some different uses for tubes? Digit. Uh, They're used in plumbing to carry the water. No, like, in school, we don't give an answer without being called on. Digit. You can. And for carrying waste. I am talking to Digit now. Gas goes through pipes, too. Stop interrupting us. And don't forget about smoke in a smokestack. No, like, that's just rude behavior. Out! Right now! All right! And a shower hose! That's also a tube, right? I told you to get out! Yikes! And a vacuum cleaner's got one, too! Hmm. And those spy glasses that pirates use when they're sailing! Hey, what do you say we all go and sneak out of here? Great idea. Let him call out to himself. Shh! And a trumpet's a tube that you blow through. <laughs> Nolik is my younger brother. There's a lot he still doesn't know, but that doesn't stop him from getting involved in things he probably shouldn't. Unfortunately, that can get him into trouble. So, every once in a while, me or my parents have to rescue him. No, I wouldn't call Nolik a pest. He's just a bit curious. That's why he broke the number one fixie rule, hide from humans. Nolik's the one who first became friends with Tom Thomas. Well, I was there too, but Nolik started it. Actually, <laughs> first it was Grandpus. Many years ago, he befriended Professor Eugenius. And after that, the professor let us have our school in his laboratory. So it turns out that Nolik is just like his grandfather. Digit, go on then. Tubes are, uh... Wow! Just look at all the tubes in here. There's rubber ones and glass ones that are curvy. Oh, yeah! Pens! Parts of them are tubes, too. Ugh. Um... <laughs> he stopped talking. He ran out of ideas. <sighs> and those tube slides at the water park. <laughs> <laughs> the barrel of a rifle and the shell of a bullet. Those are tubes. Oh, there's a tube with a serious crack. And it's also dripping and hissing. It's dripping? Where? How can I show you when you kick me out of class? 
Well, what's going on? Take a look. That tube up there is leaking. <gasps> That's acid dripping out. Is that dangerous? It's awful. Any second now, it'll explode. <gasps> <gasps> Where did Professor Eugenius go? He went to eat his sandwich. So what do we do? It's a disaster. Don't panic. Fire, Verda. Go to that hose and shut off that valve. Simka, go get a pack of mat. We'll fix this pipe ourselves. It's very important to be sure that a pipe won't leak. But making pipes that won't leak isn't so easy. Pipes can be made by rolling up a sheet of metal and sealing it up. Unfortunately, the seam can break. And that's why people have figured out how to make pipes without seams. They do it by stretching out hot metal on special machines. And PVC pipes are squeezed out of hot plastic like pasta. When the plastic is cooled down, it hardens into a pipe. We fixed it just in time. Nolik, way to go there. Hey, Simka, where is he? Don't know. Heh, <laughs> he finally left. Here I am. Nolik, I want to thank you for being alert. And I'd like you to join our class. Tiddies! Only don't forget, in my class, students cannot answer unless they're called on. Now then, pipes and tubing. Digit, please continue. Well? But Nolik said all of them already. <laughs> <laughs> Nolik. Not all. A straw for drinking a shake is a tube. And some noodles are tubes made out of dough. And what's it called? Uh, that thing. A hole in a mountain. Wait a second, I'll get it. A volcano! That's not it. They go this way. I mean the kind that go like that. <laughs> They're tunnels! You got it! Well done there. Yeah. <laughs> 